Welcome to another episode of Last Week's Comics Today. I've got, I think, eight here, two of them from previous weeks, and we're going to start with Dark Knights of Steel, issue 12. This is the end of the series. However, it sets itself up for a sequel, which I think they'd be idiots if they didn't pursue. It's just uh, build a bigger lead time before you start so there aren't months-long gaps in between issues this time. I think you put out six good issues and then things kind of fell apart. Uh, this is great. I loved it and I will be getting the hardcover collection of this whenever that is inevitably made. I had previously asked for figures to be made of these designs and now that a Dark Knights of Steel uh, Batman has been shown. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, this Batman is slim, and that that uh, the McFarlane figure is bulky as hell, and it just looks terrible, honestly. And if that's what you're going to be putting out, McFarlane, then just forget it. If you're hiring uh, C-grade sculptors, forget it. Uh, the comic is great, uh, the art is spectacular, and... Uh, there's this nice moment here. Like, just look at, look at them looking at each other. That's cute. But uh, this is great, and I loved it, and I think that's all I'm going to say about it. Last week, I was talking about how one of the ways that you can write a miniseries as, is as if it were a graphic novel. As if it were just 100, say, 120 page story and then you break it up into 20 22 page segments the other way to do it is if you write 20 to 22 pages as a standalone thing that connects then to five to six other issues and then in the end it is a cohesive thing however it acknowledges the fact that there is generally four weeks between issues and it's plenty of time for the reader to forget what they read a month ago this takes that first route there's another book in here too um where i'm playing catch up trying to remember where things left off and it doesn't really help me at all so it starts with kind of a voiceover that is unrelated to this flashback memory that's happening, and then it jumps to uh, this gun, and somebody being shot in the street, and she's making decisions, and I'm like, who are either of these people? I don't remember what's happening. There's a bit of context, but really I'm like, uh... fully remember so anyway there's there's a weird internet cult thing is what's happening here and uh there's this fbi that's undercover at a college it's kind of a jump street thing going on uh, i think some of the students know that she's older than she should be but she's a ta instead of a student so it's like kind of okay but still she's kind of standing out she's a bit of a sore thumb anyway um it's Good it will clearly, in my opinion, read much better as a trade once the series is over rather than as individual issues because the this does not help you remember what has come before at all. Battle Chasers 12. I was confused. Even once I started reading this issue. But in the lead up to this, I'm like, they've announced up through issue 12. I don't see how anything's going to wrap up what has been started. And this adds even more plot lines to what was already a pretty loaded um, book. But the last two issues have been pretty garrison heavy. And now we jump over to Nolan and Gully and the King. And that's the whole beginning. And then the second half is Garrison and uh, what's-her-face? Ruby? Red? Scarlet? Shit. I can't remember anymore. So there's a bunch of like weird crazy stuff going on with him and uh, this is not Garrison and 
this is how this is how ultimately it ends. I'll show you this. To be continued, and it says we don't know when exactly, but we will make some issues, and uh, if it's not up to my standards, then it won't get released. But we will release things as arcs. So it's sort of the saga style, except an unknown return date, and I'm glad that it will continue because I'm invested in the story, the characters, certainly, and I would like to see it continue, and I'm glad that they didn't try to rush any sort of wrap-up into this. I... This is something else that's going to read much better collected than as this, that you have to wait... <laughs> 10 years between the previous arc and this and it doesn't you know there's no there's no recap about oh this is the last time you saw nolan what he was up to and gully and what she was doing nope so if you hadn't recently read the trade like i did then i would have been even more confused about what was going on but um i'm staying subscribed to this as a series i hope this artist sticks with um whatever issue 13 is coming out whatever the next arc is um i don't think really anything has been announced yeah it says here ludo is eager for more but that's not really i don't think a confirmation that ludo is coming back so i i, I don't know i have no idea at this moment but uh i'm sticking with it I was just talking about Superior Spider-Man. You're going to see this video before you see that video. But in that, I was talking about how Kirkman on Invincible was juggling A, B, and C plots. And in this, at the back here, uh, he talks about rereading previous issues, rereading really the series in order to make sure that he's staying on plot, that he hasn't um, veered too far off, that he hasn't forgotten any subplots and I think all of that's fantastic uh, it does make me think that he should maybe script have like an overall outline of what he's doing what he's planning uh, but you know reread your story whatever uh, this is entertaining um, I usually wind up talking about this RC Coda stuff and how I generally read Samney's responses and not Kirkman but um Anyway, it's good. It's entertaining. Uh, the rest of this issue is kind of a quiet moment. It's a series of quiet moments, mostly. Um, I think setting up for things that are going to come. So, on the island, uh, we get, at first, we get this, which is fantastic. We get this kid who's basically guessing upcoming storylines. And uh, then he gets told that he's an idiot. And then the rest of the issue is people training, people trying to learn how to throw fireballs. And it's, like I said, it's a series of quiet moments. There is some really powerful stuff between Owen and Kelly and all of it's great. And uh, it's, there's also this, which I don't think would happen, but uh, this happens. Yikes, that cannot be good. But it's, Overall, it is great, and I enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to 27, where things should, I think, kick off, but we'll see. This is great. Speaking of quiet moments, Mortal Sergeant issue 8, uh, issue 7 left off, um, and it picks up like this. So, this is not great, and like I said, quiet moments, this issue takes place in a hospital as uh, the father here is trying to figure out what to do next and he's remembering, he's contemplating and uh, some of what he has done I think comes into greater context and he uh, it's, it's great it's, it's really powerful like I said, it's kind of quiet moments but done incredibly well and there's only one issue left i don't know how things are going to end i'm gonna fingers crossed that it ends well but given the amount of horrible stuff that's happened so far in the series i don't know i think i 
think Good will win out. But at this point, he's so far, I don't, mm, I don't know. This is going to be great. Most likely a hardcover collection purchase once this comes out. I will see how issue 9 ends. But uh, I've loved every issue of the series. And I think only one has not gotten pick of the week. We will see what happens with this week. Dead Romans issue 6. This is another one where I think it will read much better as a collection. It also does not really recap much of what has come before. It doesn't give you uh, written in clues as to what has been happening. But um, this, I think, is mostly sold on the art, I'm going to say. The story is... The story could be better told. It could be told in a way where it's more clear what is happening. But what is happening is the Romans have gone north and Germany has attacked. And one of the... Roman leaders has gone over to the German side because he was originally from Germany and he was playing a very long game to learn the ways of Roman and uh, be trained, get in good with them so that he could ultimately betray them. That is what has happened here and uh, it's, it's very well told. It's just... Um, Reading it over the course of six months is a little bit hard to remember, and when there's so much heavy shading, like who's who, but uh, again, it will read much better as a collection, which I do recommend picking up. Uh, hopefully it's oversized and to get a better look at the art, which is, again, beautiful. So I also grabbed two books from older weeks. Uh, issue two, I think, just came out of this. I was curious about it, so I grabbed it, and I will not be getting issue two of this. So I enjoy The Rocketeer. Uh, the movie's great. The comics, in my opinion, are very hit or miss, and there are far more misses than hits. But um, this is probably going to be a fun adventure if you don't think about it too much. I did think about it and so Cliff is out in Hollywood. This is one of the few times when there's a uh, location listed. So he's in California which is important because we're going to cycle back to that in just a minute and for some reason he says alley-oop with his hands in his pockets and he's like not doing anything and I have no idea what the hell this panel is supposed to be <laughs> but I spent far too much time thinking about this and trying to figure out what the fuck is happening uh, I still don't get it so he's in California he's there with her and he the uh, based on a um Editor's note, in a previous storyline, he had uh, somewhat given up being the Rocketeer based on, um, I think the previous story was him in um, Paris. Anyway, the point is, Germany made their own Rocketeers, right? Nazi Rocketeers. And they go to kidnap PV. So I don't know if they flew from Germany to California to kidnap a guy and then fly back because the next time we see them is Berlin. And like, did you rocket your way? What is it? 6,000, 7,000 miles? What? I'm so confused. I, uh, whatever. Simply not enough happens here to capture my interest, to hold my interest. And uh, I'm not getting the rest of this. It's the end result. I'm undecided on getting more Bryn Mawr or not. I enjoyed the first issue, but not enough that I added it to my pull list. I was gr going to grab issue two. I was going to grab other things during one of my slow weeks. And um, so I grabbed this, and I think this came out last week, maybe in the last two weeks. This is another one where it, it just dumps you back into the story that you last read in uh, for me five to six weeks ago and um, doesn't really help you get caught back up into the story 
So, it's not a great week. This guy, I remembered, uh, goes back home to an island. It's very Alan Wake reminiscent. He goes home to an island where he is unwanted. He gets um, jumped in this issue by some locals with baseball bats. Right here, he does not go to a doctor. Um, I don't know why. I believe he had a drinking problem in issue one, and he uh, starts drinking again here. Uh, in this drunken stupor, he takes a crowbar to this thing that he found in his home's basement. This thing, if you found that in your basement, would you try to open it? Uh, no, I think I would burn the house down or move or both. So he takes a sledgehammer to it because otherwise the rest of the story wouldn't happen. And uh, Soul Reaver shows up and he says, what have you done? Uh, this thing is covered in these runes. They're very weird looking and uh, Lady from the first issue is deciphering them. She says it's a simple substitution cipher. So it was apparently in English originally and it starts to spell out beware. And last that's uh, B war. Which is, you know, maybe better. Nope. Beware. But be war. I mean, that's that's a statement. Anyway. Issue 1 was great. Issue 2 is less so. And this is a five-issue series. I have no idea where it's going from here. But uh, in another slow week, I might grab issue 3. And that is everything that I got this week. As far as pick of the week goes, it might be... Will it be... I'm going to say all three of these are great. Firepower, Dark Knights of Steel, and Immortal Sergeant. Immortal Sergeant, I think, edges the other two out. I will give this pick of the week. Um, as always, I get all of my books from a local comic shop. If you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.